Hey YouTube, not so slim Jim coming to you with another video out of Texas. Yes, we have some more stupidity about Texas going on. I don't know if you guys are remembering, but about 11 months ago in July of 2020, during the Democrats quote unquote summer of love, uh, we had some, uh, some protests going on. I'm not going to say riots because we didn't really have that here in Texas because I like to think the, the armed population kind of kept that under control. But in Austin, Texas, we had quite a bit of uh, people walking the streets and uh, they were going out and they were voicing their opinions and, and doing their things. And Austin PD handled it very well. They kept them under control. There wasn't any major fights. There was some here and there skirmishes, some pepper spray, so on and so on. But there was a gentleman by the name of Garrett Foster, who was a BLM Antifa LARPer who decided to open carry his AK-47. Now, as many of you people know, I am a pro open carry advocate. But the number one rule about open carrying is you have to do so lawfully and you have to do, full, do so in a safe manner. Which means if you're going to open carry, you need to know the law, you need to know how to safely handle your weapon, and most of all, you did not point your weapon at anyone unless you mean to kill them. Which means if you're doing that, if you point your weapon at someone, that means that you're threatening their life with a weapon and they have the right to kill you back. So that's why I never point my gun at anyone because if I do, they have all the right in the world to point their weapons back at me. So, as usual, be smart with guns. Well, he decided that after an Uber driver had taken a stupid left turn, realized, oh crap, there was a whole bunch of people walking down the street to hit his brakes. And of course, the usual response of idiots decided to start banging on his car and screaming at him and so on and so on. And this Garrett Foster individual decided, hey, I'm going to point my AK-47 at this guy. And of course, the guy in the car happened to be a sergeant in the 1st Cavalry Division out of, out of Fort Hood, Texas, where I happen to live. And he got shot. Garrett Foster, that is, not the Army guy, because well, let's just face it, us Army guys, we know how to pull the trigger. So, after a three-week investigation, the APD, or Austin Police Department, found that there wasn't really enough evidence to, at that time, uh, prosecute the guy for any charges. He continued on, stayed active duty, went on his way, and he actually ended up moving to Alaska, where he currently is serving. <sighs> well, as it always happens in Austin, they elected some new socialist anti-gun person, and this one happened to be a DA. This is the same DA that I covered about a month ago in a video who decided to entangle red flag laws into bail requirements. Now, what he did, if you haven't seen the video, feel free to go back and look at it on my channel about red flag laws, is he made a bail requirement that you have to willingly turn in all your firearms to the police if you want to be released on bail. And there's a whole slew of reasons why they can do this, and at the very end is just because. Well, if they don't like you and they think you're a threat or just because they want you to, they can make you turn in every firearm you own or you have to stay in jail or go back to jail. So, gotta love that one. Well, in this case, it turns out they did the exact same thing to him, but we'll get in that in a second. So, this new DA, who's the champion of the left, the anti-gun, the pro-socialism, decided there's no way we could let this, uh, this NCO in the army, the Daniel Perry, go free. We have to make an example of him. I don't care if there's enough evidence to actually go and arrest him or anything. We're going to go ahead and go for it anyway. So, he put a grand jury together, and in this grand jury, they basically said, hey, we, this guy, we think he murdered a guy. We think he did this. We think he did that. And his attorney down here in Texas, because he's you know located in Alaska, which I don't know if you guys have seen, is a pretty far distance away from Texas. Uh, he didn't decide to you know take leave, fly all the way from Alaska down here to Texas on his own expense, uh, have to testify during a grand jury. He decided to let his lawyer take care of it. So his lawyer tried to go and defend him in his place, but the DA refused to allow it him into the court to defend him only thing he allowed him to do is submit a packet of information and even within that packet of information the da only allowed certain bits of evidence to be released to the grand jury and the rest he declined does this sound a little gestapo because it sounds a little gestapo to me so regardless of fact is the grand jury of course with only partial evidence with no ability to defend himself found him 
possibly guilty, and they press charges for him. So now he has a $300,000 bail, and they're going to force him to turn in all of his firearms. Further than that, they're going to put an additional order on him where he will no longer be able to handle any firearms, which I'm not sure people realize this, but in the military, that's kind of a requirement. You have to go to the range and show your proficiency. And here in Texas, well, things don't move too quickly in the judicial system. There's a guy, Marvin, or Marvin Guy, here in Texas, who's local, who was involved in a shooting with a no-knock warrant, who's been sitting in jail for over five years now, waiting for a court date. So it could be that long, if not longer, which I doubt that's an extreme, but the fact it could happen. So he could be waiting years before they actually finally bring him in front of a judge and a jury. And at that point, he can't touch a firearm. So all they're trying to do is destroy his military career, force him out of the military, take all his money away, force him back here or back down to Texas and make him sit around doing Lord knows what while he can't own a firearm, which already we're looking at an eighth or a second and eighth amendment violation for excessive bail and also taking away his second amendment right when he hasn't even then there's a difference when he hasn't been convicted of a crime yet only suspected of a crime which is absolutely ridiculous and all this is going on because we have some da in austin who decided he's got to show how big bad anti-gun is so this trial is still ongoing in fact it hasn't even gone to the trial portion yet we just got past the bail portion and the grand jury once I get more information about when a date's going to be, what's going on, heck, if I can even get down to Austin and sit on it, Lord knows I'll have a chance I'll do it. But until then, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, leave them down in the comments section, and we'll talk to you next time.